How does she convince everyone that she's good? Good is not a thing you are, Kamala. It is a thing you do. I know dressing up as Captain Marvel is weird. I spend too much time in fantasy land. Cool, is this Nani's? That is just a jump. What does it feel like? Like an idea come to life. Everything's changing really fast. If you save one life, you save the world. Are you sure that we can keep that on? To no my. It's a lawsuit. Great, that'll make Captain Marvel in court. It won't be the first case in the American judiciary to hug it out. You want me to do it? Yep. Okay, yeah. come on, you did amazing yeah. work. You've done amazing work. It would be honored if you would play uh, Kamala Khan for us in the Miss Marvel show. <laughs> and it was unanimous decision. Oh my God. Perfect. I can't right now. I can't comprehend this right now. I'm a superior now, so that's normal. Another day in the Marvel Universe. Kamala Khan is this passionate, creative high school kid. She's going through all those awkward, cringeworthy moments. Family drama, boy trouble, school problems. Are you following? Yes, keep going. And also, she's like a huge fan, a huge fan. A big fan. Such a fan. She is a fan of Captain Marvel. Iman Vellani. That girl is Kamala Khan. Kamala Khan discovers that she has the superpowers. She can manifest light. But being a superhero is not quite as simple. Kamala's biggest conflict is with herself. Maybe they're right. It's not really the brown girls from Jersey City who saved the world. I wish that you would just focus on your story. You're Kamala Khan. You want to save the world, then you're going to save the world. Do you even know what you are? I'm a superhero. <laughs> Despite her superpowers, she has a strong heart. It's not about who you look like, the clothes you wear. It's about what you do with what you've been given. I can't even put it into words how cold this is. It's, it's very, my heart is very full. Welcome back, everyone. This will be my brand new Miss Marvel trailer video. There's a whole bunch of Easter eggs here for everything that's going on in this part of the timeline. Doctor Strange Multiverse Madness, Thor Love and Thunder, Avengers Endgame, obviously, because everything is calling back to Avengers Endgame and everything that the Avengers have been doing so far. There was also a lot of funny Iron Man stuff that they talked about when they were talking about these episodes, so I'll break that down too. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the episodes. I will be doing videos for all the episodes. The big reminder too is that this series is going to overlap with the Obi-Wan Kenobi episodes for a couple weeks. So what'll probably wind up happening is that I'll post my Obi-Wan Kenobi episodes first in the morning and then post my Miss Marvel episode later in the afternoon. There's only gonna be a couple weeks of overlap so it won't be that big a deal. But one of the big things that they talk about during this is that how she's meant to be this fan of Captain Marvel. But the funny thing that the actress, Iman Balani talked about is that she was actually in real life, this huge Iron Man stan. So anytime something really big would happen to her while they were working on the series, like when she was cast, when she was working on the first couple of episodes, she would go back and rewatch the original Iron Man film because in real life, it's like her favorite movie that she just goes back and rewatches all the time. Solid plan there because the original Iron Man movie is one of the best movies that Marvel has ever made. But the funny thing that they said is when they started working on actual episodes, she kept trying to work in Iron Man references to all the actual scenes that she was shooting. Because if you think about it, in reality, Iron Man is such a huge celebrity because of what happened during Avengers Endgame and him sacrificing himself, wielding the Infinity Gauntlet. Within the context of the universe around the world, it was such a huge moment. People would just be talking about Iron Man all the time for years and years and years. The legend of Iron Man. So just like in real life, her character that she's playing would also be this huge Iron Man stand. But they said the funny thing is that when they were shooting the first couple of episodes, one of the notes from Kevin Feige as he was watching all the dailies and the footage that they were filming is that there was too much Iron Man going on in the series. Like, no, 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 too much, too much. You got too much Iron Man going on in here. Because apparently left and right, she just kept talking about Iron Man during all the scenes. And as they say during the series, they want it to be like the comic book where this version of Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel, is more of a Captain Marvel fan. 
A lot of you also pointing out the irony of that statement because in the MCU, Captain Marvel has only spent like a couple of minutes on Earth tops while she's been actual Captain Marvel. I'm so sorry, I have to deal with this. You can get my number from Bruce. It was so nice to meet you. Yeah, I, I, I don't have her number. She, she, she does this a lot. So if you really think about it, most people wouldn't really know who Captain Marvel is. Like, who? Who are you talking about? That that one person who was here for a couple minutes? I guess I guess she was pretty cool. She kind of helped out. Like, she was back on Earth in the 90s, but right after she figured out how her powers work, she spent the vast majority of her time in Kree scroll space over the years trying to get them to chill out on the Kree scroll war, which had been going on for like the last hundred years. So when they make all the jokes, like the shang chi post credit scene where the Hulk is like, ah, oh, she does that all the time, like just ducking out on calls, like, see you guys, bye, later, give me a call. Uh, we don't we don't have her number, we can't call her, we don't know what's going on. The reason she's not around, the reason why she's not in Earth space is because she's over in Kree scroll space, still trying to stop the Kree scroll war from spilling over. The events of this series are supposed to set her up for a crossover into the Marvel's movie, Captain Marvel 2, and I believe that during that movie, part of the plot is them dealing with the Kree scroll war in a much bigger way than they have in previous films. Also setting up some crossover and connection to the Secret Invasion series with Nick Fury as well. I've already done a couple videos about that. They're doing a different version than the Secret Invasion from the comics, but there's meant to be a lot of similar Easter eggs for that. For instance, it seems like Amelia Clark is playing the Skrull Empress during that. I haven't talked a lot about Monica Rambeau either, but obviously she's a big part of this too. During WandaVision, Monica Rambeau specifically had beef with Captain Marvel because she felt like she'd kind of abandoned her family and her mother in their time of need over the years. Like, it sounds like she wasn't around for her mother's death, even though Monica Rambeau herself seems like she got snapped before her mother died because she woke up in the hospital room. So I think the idea is that she was visiting her mother, then she got snapped, you have the five-year time jump, and her mother died at some point during that five-year time jump. And then when the Hulk snapped the Infinity Gauntlet and blipped everyone back, that's when she came back. It also sounds like she has beef with her because of all the years that she grew up at S.W.O.R.D. with her mother trying to build the S.W.O.R.D. agency before they obviously took a big left turn with Tyler Hayward. But like you have all these big conflicts, all these big wars that they could have used Captain Marvel for. So it sounds like they'll address that at some point during the Marvel's movie. And the cool connection to Doctor Strange 2 is that in that 838 universe version of the Illuminati, her mother, Maria Rambeau, had become a version of Captain Marvel in that universe. That was meant to be a big deep cut for Monica Rambeau in the comics. They were just using her mother, Maria Rambeau, for it. In the comics, technically, Monica Rambeau is the first female to use the name Captain Marvel. She wound up using the name long before Carol Danvers wound up using it in the comics. So they just wanted to wink at that with this version of Maria Rambeau, Captain Marvel, in this other universe. But because they want Kamala Khan's Miss Marvel character to be such a stand for her character, I think they'll probably have some extra scenes or some special scenes in the first couple of episodes to explain how she became such a fan of her character. Like there'll be some missing footage or missing battles that we haven't seen yet in the Marvel movies where she spent more time on Earth that we just haven't seen in the Marvel movies so far. Or like there's a bunch of extra stuff that she did during the final battle in Avengers Endgame that wound up being deleted scenes that they'll reference and the news caught that and then she saw that and that's when she became a huge fan of her character. A lot of you are also picking up Spider-Man Homecoming vibes from the series and the trailers. That's basically how they're treating her character. They're going with a very Spider-Man Homecoming kind of approach to her character. Following her through high school as she figures out her powers, like season one is her basically figuring out the negabands and how these powers work. Then she'll cross over into the movies like Captain Marvel 2, the Marvels movie, maybe a couple other things. They might do a season two, and then eventually they'll spin up for like Young Avengers stuff because they're setting up Young Avengers with a bunch of the other characters from the team in the comics. But for example, she's growing up in Jersey City here. This isn't too far from where WandaVision in the Hex happened, so I am wondering if they reference what Scarlet Witch did, because everything on the series is meant to take place after the events of Spider-Man No Way Home. So for example, she knows that Spider-Man exists. He's web-slinging around the city, saving people, being this vigilante. But because of the spell, she doesn't know that Peter Parker specifically is Spider-Man. And it also kind of explains why Doctor Strange isn't getting involved too. Like, wait a minute, there's this person with superpowers in Jersey City getting out of control. We should probably take care of that. He's busy with Scarlet Witch, what's happening with the Multiverse of Madness while this is going on. And then you have the events of Thor, Love and Thunder, Gore the God Butcher. So Thor is busy with that. There's all this crazy stuff going on in other parts of the world. Anytime something crazy happens in the MCU, people always make the joke, where are the Avengers? Why don't they call the Avengers who are still alive to come handle this? Even though some of them are dead, some of them are still alive and available to help. They had a couple funny moments during Falcon and Winter Soldier when they addressed this in a really offhanded kind of way. Like, what do the Avengers who are still alive consider Avengers level problems and what stuff do they leave for regular authorities to deal with? And usually the only time they view it as an Avengers level problem when like they actually would come together is if someone on the level of Thanos showed up 
Or if someone like, say, Scarlet Witch went completely off the rails, that's when the Avengers, like Doctor Strange, would get involved. If you spotted any other Easter eggs in the trailers that I haven't talked about in my previous Miss Marvel videos, just write them below in the comments. Or if you have any questions about what's going on with the character and how she's connected to everything else, I just posted a whole bunch of Star Wars trailer videos in my Obi-Wan videos, so click here for all my Obi-Wan Kenobi episode videos, and click here for my brand new Mandalorian Season 3 trailer video in Easter eggs. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.